Yo, what's up guys? So uh, this is a different video than I usually make. Um, so not, uh, I will show you in this video what kind of used EVs we have on, uh, on the Norwegian market. Yeah, um, so okay, that applies mainly for Norway, but uh, you can, you get the idea, okay? So uh, this is uh, the, the, it's called Finn.no, which is like the Norwegian uh, second-hand market, yeah. Uh, so I have chosen to show only the, the second-hand cars and also the new cars, no leasing or auction. Um, and then I chose, <laughs> it's funny, it's called fuel, yeah, electricity, all right? And then all the other filters are off, so um, this is a bit weird because, you know, uh, okay, I could try to use um, Cam Studio. I used it before, but Cam Studio tends to kind of bug after 10 minutes of recording. So that's why I bootlegged this. So I put the camcorder on the tripod and I record uh, the screen, the, the TV in my living room. Oh, yes. So let's check out this one. Okay. Uh, well, hang on, I'm actually, I'm sure, let me do this, okay, there, okay. <clears throat> so this is a Citroën Saxo uh, for 10,000 nook, and the conversion is uh, um, one nook, I mean, or 10 nook is about one euro. So you can pretty much divide this by 10 to get the, the price in euros, about 1,000 euros. And also similar in, uh, in US dollars, yeah. So, but you can look up, but you know, yeah, just general rule of thumb, divided by 10, then you get the price in dollars or euros. So only one, I mean, 10,000 nook for this car. Hmm. Okay. It's, um, it's somewhat rare in Norway. I almost never see this anymore. Uh, probably for a good reason. Uh, okay. Analog gauge. Okay. I think that's it. Um, and also the, all the language here must be in Norwegian. This is a Norwegian site. Uh, okay, it says 1100 kilos. Okay, I will not talk too much about details. I'm not too interesting. It claims to have 27 horsepower. I'm not sure if that is correct. Uh, but um, it says, okay, sell us some bill, which is like a, a, a car that is uh, not drivable, only for parts. Okay, you, know, you can't charge it, okay? And then they've been changing some stuff. Uh, there's a lamp in the dashboard. Yeah, electrical fault somewhere. All right, so so you can't drive this car. Hmm. Okay. Um, let me check the next one then. How about this one? So this is also a Citroen Saxo, but that, this one is 19,000. Look. Okay. Uh, well, only one picture. Hmm. Okay. And um, you see, this one claims to have 60 horsepower. I'm not sure about this. Okay, so for you guys who don't know, uh, my first EV was a Tesla Model S and I started driving electric in 2013. So whatever happened before 2013, um, I don't have any good experience with that. So I've been driving fossil until that time. Okay, it says, oh, well, it's a well-maintained car with good uh, battery capacity. It's for sale. Um, some roof rack, three three wheels uh, okay not not too interesting stuff oh this one is interesting okay 15 reserve batteries huh okay so there's like some extra parts you get here and it says okay um it has a, a cabin heater uh similar to Vebasto. so that probably means that it runs on fossil uh, fuel for for the heater and uh, that is common for kind of these these old cars and um yeah it, it has done seventy five thousand kilometers Okay, uh, and an estimated range is 70 to 80 kilometers. Uh, and they, they claim that uh, they drove 40 kilometers in summer and they had 50% left, but that is, that is summer range. Now these cars, these old cars, well, I haven't tried myself, but I guess that, you know, they don't perform that well in winter. So maybe half the capacity, I mean, half the range in winter. But again, this one has the fossil uh, uh, heater. So maybe it's not that bad. <laughs> oh, wow, by the way, just notice, EL 10,204 is <laughs> one of the few 200 first EVs in Norway then. Oh, okay, huh, interesting. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Oh, huh, I think, okay. Um, think City. Uh, that one is like, it's a Norwegian made EV. Okay, maybe they, they got parts from other places, but it was assembled in Norway. So it's like a... It's like a piece of uh, Norwegian EV history here, you see here. I think it's 
what is kind of funny with this car is that it's made of like car, uh, uh, plastic uh, so you can't get any dents here you can't get any scratches so it's somewhat like durable it's a, it, it's a good city car I guess and it's called Think City so yeah you see the interior is very basic I actually drove this car like maybe like um, fifth, some 15 years ago at some amusement park I just drove around some closed track and back then I was like okay I had a Renault 5 so <laughs> but it looks very basic the interior okay and it's a two-seater so no no seat in the back but that means that you actually have a somewhat large uh, trunk there to put stuff in there uh, so surprisingly okay you have adjustable head uh, headrest even hmm okay so i guess i have to try one of these cars so now i'm just based on some assumption the pictures i see and uh, all that but let, let me look more okay so this one also uh, 1000 kilo all right 46 horsepower uh, i'm not sure if it's front wheel drive rear wheel drive uh, okay it says uh, I'll claim some range yeah, like most of these people who claim range is like um we don't know how fast they drive and if it's a summer or winter, but uh, two it's a two-seater, okay. So that one is 49,000 Nook, <laughs> which is like a big leap from uh, from the Saxo. So it seems like there's like a, um, yeah, and, and the, the entry point to get some EV is around 50,000 Nook. So let me look at the next one here, okay. Um, it's a Citroen C0 and these are like the, the the triplets, we call them the triplets. We have the C0, we have, uh, we can see here, let me see, we have the IMEV and uh, I, I'm sure I went. The, those two, uh, those, those three cars are, are very alike. Like they, they, are, they have the same hardware, you know, they're the same drivetrain and, and somewhat uh, part chassis, but uh, I guess they equip them differently. And again, you know, this was before my time of the EV world, so. Um, I think the the IMEA is like the most equipped one. They, it has different uh, features, all of these cars. So these were very common, uh, I guess, uh, almost 20 years, well, um, like some, some 15 years ago. These cars were quite common. Wait, not 15 years ago. Maybe like five, six years ago. Yeah, time flies so fast, but okay. Uh, again, very basic interior, but I kind of like that it's somewhat open because you don't need to have like those those like um console type like you're having a leaf nowadays but okay mm -hmm. uh i guess i have to test one of these cars and you know what pavel he owns an an imea so oh yes he even asked me today if i wouldn't want to borrow it for testing i'm like oh yes oh yes uh but i'm a little bit too busy nowadays so yeah we're gonna check it out later okay um <clears throat> So well, let me, let me, I just saw a picture. Let me just check here. Okay, so it seems to have to have air conditioning. Hmm. Yeah, but the, some cars don't even have that. You know, in Norway because uh, you don't need it. It's not that warm. So uh, uh, 64 horsepower, and uh, I think if I remember correctly, this is a rear wheel drive, right? Uh, and a uh, good thing about these C zero is that, or these the triplets is that they have. Um, Chadmo fast charging and also uh, yeah regular slow charging of course so uh, okay so that was 50,000 and you will see that there are many many similar cars for uh, for 50,000 here okay let me check this one out uh, IMEA yeah this is supposed to be yeah okay so it, it uses type 1 yeah those old days uh, type 1 were common uh, kind of well <laughs> state of charge I guess um, again very basic car it's like a manual gear lever. Maybe they didn't want to confuse. Oh, it has a dent. Ah, oh, shit. Okay. So, um, uh, there could be several reasons why these cars are sold kind of cheap. Uh, okay, it has some dents and uh, 69,000 kilometers. So, not too far for a car that has that is somewhat old. C0. Okay, see, many of these triplets go for about 50,000. Uh, let me just check out the C0 here. Uh, Hmm, looks it's a nice looking car what somewhat high uh, el number here hmm okay how about some interior shots um okay uh no okay there's one all right you see they, they look uh, similar these cars they have like a radio cd player 
uh, oh, have some stuff. Uh, seems like some repair uh, bill. Uh, they've done some. Not sure what it is. Let's not go into too much detail. But fifty thousand for a car uh, that can do. Okay. Uh, so the the owner here, uh, fin user. Hmm. Why am I not seeing it? Am I logged in? Oh, I'm not logged in. Oh, okay, maybe that's why. Okay. Okay, uh, actually, I don't remember the, the password and that, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I'll figure out later. But uh, okay, let's uh, continue. So they had whoever this is has to sell the C0 because uh, uh, they, they don't have access to charging anymore. Yeah, so that that is somewhat important. If <coughs> if you can't charge at home, then you kind of have to sell it. All right. Uh, so that's fifty thousand. Okay, many of these. Oh, Imea. Oh, that's this. I kind of like this color. You know. The Imea, uh, white Imea. Um, actually, wifey kind of likes this. The look of it uh, as a wifey car. So I'm okay. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, looks somewhat spacious in there. Uh, it's um It's a four seater, not a five seater because I can, I think it's a, it's somewhat narrow, so they don't have enough space for for five seats. <coughs> Let me double check here. So it says, yeah, four seater. Um, uh, let's see, uh, Bill and Shop. Okay, so they are them. Okay, this seems to be a, a, a woman who was alone and then uh, went, dro drove to, um, to the kindergarten and stuff. Uh, okay, so the estimated range, yeah. Uh, okay, not too much info about that. Okay, let's just close this and go for the next one. Uh, so Again, more of these. Uh, oh, this one is different. <laughs> okay, let's check out this one. Okay, it's um, it's a Mia electric. Yeah, I've seen it once before when I was in um, Amsterdam. Um, it's a weird looking car. I have to uh, I have to admit that it's uh, somewhat unique uh, because you drive the, the driver is centered here. You know, there's only one like seat in the front and then you have two seats in the back so it's a, it's a three seater with somewhat good leg room I guess for the rear seat passengers. No adjustable headrest um, and just the whole interior looks so weird like like uh, I guess maybe this car was designed as an EV from ground up I don't know uh, the, even the mirror is placed there so like what? Uh, well, actually, yeah, it kind of makes sense because, you know, usually you will have the driver and then you will have the driver position here and then the mirror will be in the center. So, <laughs> interesting. Yeah, so, um, so they want a 59,000 nook for this car. It's only 764 kilos, uh, but it has 14 horsepower. What the heck? Um, so yeah, it says that the car can do 120 kilometers. Uh, well, it's by specification, but they they have done 100 kilometers, and I'm thinking 100 kilometers. Okay, if I drive it, maybe 50 or 60. So there are only seven of these. Uh, so what uh, spare parts are easy to get? Yeah, okay. So it's it's a French-made Mia Electric. Okay. Hmm. Right, um, and then if you move higher up in the price range, uh, well, we still see lots of these triplets for about sixty thousand. Um, now, the reason why they are, are differently priced might be different mileage. So, sixty-seven, seventy thousand kilometers, uh, eighty thousand kilometers. Yeah. So, uh, and they say thirty-five kilowatt, but that's yeah, that's the the power. Um, the power output. Oh, this is the first leaf we see. Oh, okay, let's take a look at that one. Whoa. So, if you have, what, what was the price again? Let me check here. 69,000. Yeah, okay, so you have to stretch it more if you want the leaf. So, this is um, probably the first generation leaf, and um, many of you guys know this, you know, but okay, it has a dent there. But just look at this interior compared to, uh, let's just let me show you here. So if you go to, uh, let's say, uh, this one, okay, and uh, if there's an interior picture here, uh, well, kind of, just look at this very basic interior, like, like, ooh. and then you look at the leaf and you're like, damn, that looks a lot better, it looks way more premium. So 
This is the reason why Leaf sold a bunch of cars in Norway in 2011 when they introduced it here. It's like way more like this is just uh, an electric toy, I guess, if you can call it like that. Whereas this one is more like a car, you know, like, like most people uh, know the car. Okay, it looks very conventional here, like I mentioned on the center console. They could have opened up some more space, but oh well. Uh, it's still way better than the, the other option, but you have to pay a steeper price though to get this. So yes, it's a five-seater, you know, great. And it has, oh, okay, it seems to have lost three dots here on the capacity bar. Let's see if the owner uh, mentioned that. Um, so it says leaf 80 kilowatt. Yeah, okay. Uh, what was that? Oh, is this the new 80 kilowatt hour leaf? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, 109 horsepower. Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay. Uh, 2011 model leaf with low uh, running cost. Okay. Uh, perfect for city and <laughs> boom shooting, which is a um, uh, toll road. Okay. They, oh, this owner had it since it was new and never experienced any problems, any issues. Well, I mean, drifts for them, probably uh, no like s s serious issues. Okay, and they drive it Finnoy Sun, okay, 55 kilometers per day. And okay, they say that the battery capacity has been reduced, and this one has done 150,000 kilometers. Um, so, uh, if okay, they don't say how many, but we, we saw it there. So, you know, let's just do a quick math here. So, 9 divided by 12. Is, okay, so it has 75% capacity left. Oh, <laughs> but I mean, if you want a leaf, it can fast charge just like the triplets, and it's probably way more, way more premium, and it has app support. So why not? Um, okay, let's move, move, keep moving. Okay, and then more triplets, lots of triplets. Oh, another leaf. Okay, let's check it out. <coughs> okay, this is a black one, and. Uh, yeah, this is car. What, oh, was it car of the year 2011? Hmm, well, for a good reason. Uh, it's well deserved. Okay, it has a cracked windscreen. Yeah, uh, but it's on that side, so it's not critical for the driver. Uh, yeah, okay, a, a 17 uh, amp. Uh, well, it says a 17 amp charger, but technically it's a charge charging station. The charger is in the car. <coughs> but yeah, look at this. You know, it's it's just looks way better than uh, the cheaper uh, triplets like interior wise so uh, okay let me check here what is uh, up with this car 120,000 kilometers okay less uh, mileage than the cheaper uh, leaf uh all go out okay small leap uh, yes some some scratches e eu uh, yeah, you know the eu uh, in norway even though we don't uh, we are not in eu but we have to go to this EU approval every two years after the car has passed like I don't remember exactly but uh, I think uh, after the car is about four years then it has to go through the EU uh, pass uh, the EU test every two years so they have done some maintenance blah blah okay oh wow this one um, <clears throat> has lost only two yeah so so only two bars lost so if you try and do the math again uh, 10 uh, 12 so oh it has about 80 percent yeah some 80 percent left so um the only way to find out is to use leaf spy connect to it and read uh, the state of health uh well this is funny i saw it uh, yeah it says it says battery 24 kilowatt uh motor output 24 80 kilowatt <laughs> no it's supposed to be 24 kilowatt hour and then 80 kilowatt yes you noob okay let's look at the next one um oh, another thing Ooh, wh why is this one so expensive hmm compared to the other thing here uh, it's also old okay you see the thing has this cce plug it can charge through and as far as i know it only charges on shuku well correct me if i'm wrong i don't know too much about these cars i need to learn more about these old evs um <coughs> okay it says a uh, range of 100 kilometers. Uh, Tromsø. Whoa, someone in Tromsø used this car. Okay, well, let's uh, keep moving. Um, this is going to be a long ass video. So many cars to look at. Uh, let me just start skipping them. Okay, some more Leaf, some Iwan, Imea. Yeah, the triplet. Lots of triplets. Leaf again. Klepposter. Yeah, okay. Now we see, we're starting to see more and more leaves, leaves or leaves now at 
at around 75,000 uh, uh, nook. So I guess if you want, I mean, um, scroll back a little bit here. We're still on uh, on the first page. So if you want like a piece of shit EV, you have to go for these like broken ones or whatever for 20,000, but they, I guess they're probably not that good. So you have to expect to pay about 50,000 for, for some, I would call it the high mileage cars. For these cars, because they have small batteries, 70 to 120,000 kilometers is somewhat high for those cars. Uh, but I mean, it still works, you know, they probably have about 80% uh, capacity left. So 50,000 Nook is probably the lowest you should go, maybe even 60,000, then you get maybe better equipment, maybe lower um, uh, mileage. And then if you want a Leaf, which I consider a better car just based on what I know about. I mean, I tested Leaf several times, but I haven't I actually never, never even driven an IMEA or a triplet before. But uh, based on my assumption, I think the Leaf is a way better car than the triplets. Um, so then you have to stretch it to about 70 to 80,000 Nook, and then you can get a uh, 24 kilowatt hour Leaf. Well, let's just scroll down here. Um, oh, whoa, a van. Okay, uh, a Ford van, electric van, uh, that's like a unicorn, right? Or uh, This guy has lots of pictures of it. So it's a Ford Transit van. Well, I didn't even know they existed as electric. Um, okay, let's not, oh, okay. <laughs> so let me see, what is this, a speedometer? Okay, range, no, this is, it seems like it used to be RPM meter, but what the heck is this thing? Oh, it's, it's a power meter, of course. Yeah, you have... Uh, huh? I'm not sure what the heck it is. And what is this? I, I guess it's supposed to be um, uh, coolant temperature, oil temperature. And is it is it really a battery temperature gauge? And then this is, is state of charge, of course, uh, very inaccurate. So uh, it just you can just see that this is a compliance car. It was it was a fossil car that was forcefully muted into an EV. Um, oh wow, I, I think I have similar. It's a Type One cable. Yeah, um, I don't know if the, this one has even a fast charging option. But Ford Transit for seventy nine thousand Nook. Uh, so it's a van. It's not as big as an ENV two hundred and maximum speed one hundred twenty one kilometers per hour. Um, <coughs> so it has on 49,000 kilometers. So it's it's a van, but it's smaller than ENV 200. But at least if you want a van, then you could go for this one. <coughs> okay, uh, let me just check out this one. I've seen it before. Like, whoa, this is just uh, yeah. It's a it's a uh, weird colored. Uh, leaf and it has uh, there's some damage here but you can if you remove the wrapping then you know uh, the damage the scratches shouldn't be there but yeah so you can even get a, a weird looking leaf for 80,000 nook uh, let's go to the next page um, <clears throat> so more leaves oh <laughs> what the heck a buddy yes uh, the buddy cute oh geez uh, someone didn't get the memos they took a picture from the cell phone uh, screenshot from cell phones. So all the pictures are small like this now. Yes, keep in mind not everyone is looking at it uh, from a phone. So tiny pictures, bad panda, but it's a three-seater. Um, buddy, we probably we can look at another. Okay, whatever. No view for you. I'm gonna look at another buddy later. Uh, I mean, uh, actually, let me just check out this buddy again. Um, was it? I want to know how uh, 32,000 kilometers only. That is low mileage, but <laughs> it has 18 horsepower and only 700 kilos. So, uh, yeah. Okay, so it says range up to 100 kilometers, winter and summer. Really? And it says free toll road. Yeah, because this one is is not um, in the, what's it called? In the M1 classification as the, the, re the regular um, car. It's a uh, it's classified as a motorized um, uh, motorcycle, four-wheel motorcycle, something like that. So uh, even when, if we get, uh, if we have to pay toll roads one day in Norway, as of today, uh, toll road, I mean, EVs, they don't have to pay toll roads, but eventually toll roads will be 
uh, for EVs also, but these is, is in a different classification, so they will never ever have to pay toll roads. So that is an advantage, I guess, but uh, again, the toll roads for Norway will be, uh, for EVs, will always be lower than for fossil. So you still save a lot of money by driving electric. But it claims 100 kilometers of range, and um, um, but you see, it goes up to 70 kilometers per hour only. So, <laughs> yeah, okay, it has a diesel heater, yeah. So that's how it can, that's why you can claim 100 kilometers winter and summer, yeah. So again, you know, very common to have diesel heater on those uh, tiny cars. And tiny EVs. Okay, more leaves, 80,000. Yeah, I, I would still, if I had to choose between um, a leaf and a, and a triplet, I would probably go for a leaf. Uh, but again, wifey doesn't like the looks of the leaf, so um, that's why she wanted to go for a high Mia. Um, but it's not something we're going to buy I mean, anytime soon, so we have to, uh, ooh, 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 look at this, we have to decide later. But oh, it's a smart for two for 90,000. Ooh, okay. Now we're talking. So the smart is, um, yeah, this is smart for two. There's also a smart for four, which is four uh, seater. So it's a tiny city car. This one is really a city car. Like you, I guess you can't even take it on a Europe road trip. But uh, so again, I like that they have open uh, interior here, uh, but I don't like that they don't, you can't, there's a glow box. It's just a hole there. Like what, what the heck? And the whole interior looks very plastic-ish. Um, and it, like this car was not born electric. It's it's a fossil. Like, uh, they just put some display and display some stuff about electric stuff. Okay, I like it that it shows state of charge in percentage. Not many cars in this this price range shows state of charge in percentage. Uh, some kind of trip meter here. Uh, oh well, charging cable and stuff. So uh, fairly big trunk. No adjustable headrest. Um, and um, what is the same picture? Okay, what is what the heck is this? Oh, okay, the, what is the point to show state of charge here when you already have it on the, that the display, you know? And this is probably a, a power output or re, re... Yeah, this is the middle, so power output and region, I guess. So I bet these two gauges were used for... Um, this one was probably fuel gauge and then some... I don't know what the heck it was, but again, compliance car. Um, I don't know, but um, for 89,000 Nook, you get a smart for two, which is only a two seater. Um, so let me see, do we see the classification here? Maybe this one is also classified as uh, the, the MC, you know, the MC Hammer. So um, uh, they want uh, this guy selling it because it needs a bigger, bigger car with more range. Yeah, so uh, again, they claim range between 80 and 100 kilometers. Hmm. Um, I guess, you know, my personal opinion again is that if I had the money, I would still go for a Leaf. I wouldn't pay uh, 90,000 Nook for, for a two-seater, but I mean, that's just my opinion. Like, for, if you know that you will never ever need that space, then yeah, okay. Uh, ooh, what the heck, another, um, ooh, another van. I call it a pizza car because it's not really a, that big of a van, but uh, so it's an electric van and this time from Peugeot uh, again it seems like it's a compl compliance car it's a fossil car that has been uh, rebuilt to an EV okay uh, oh yeah I see that it has way less space than ENV 200 uh, it will be interesting once we start looking at the ENV 200 so a van for 90,000 um, uh, Nook 89,000, it has 67 horsepower, that's kind of underpowered in my opinion, because you know, the van, yeah, this this car weighs 1,600 kilos, and you probably want to add some uh, some tools or whatever, so it's going to feel slow, just like I tested the other van from, um, uh, there was a Renault, it was in the Renault Kangoo, it was also like, felt weak compared to ENB 200. So why would you buy this one? Well, probably because it's it's one it's one of the cheapest vans, electric vans out there. Um, other than that, I would probably try to squeeze out some more money to get the EME two hundred. But let's let's look again. Oh, <laughs> Renault Fluence. Uh, so the Renault Fluence is also like almost like a unicorn in Norway. Because almost nobody has them. 
Um, I guess it exists as a fossil fluent and then they made uh, an electric version of this. So you see it looks very fossil-like, very traditional. The, the user took some pictures and used digital zoom. So you see that the, some of the pictures are very blurry. Um, I hope this is not the touch screen. So the Renault Fluence is, um, I mean, how to put this? Is, let me see, do we have any pictures of the trunk? Oh, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't lean the tires, the, the, on the, okay, let me see more pictures. Uh, okay, oh, okay, back seat space, I guess. And it seems to be a comfortable rider. You know, these, uh, these are called um, the SM3 in uh, Korea. And I've seen they are, they are somewhat popular in Korea. I used to own a Renault Laguna. Actually, I had two of those Lagunas before I got my uh, Tesla. So um, I kind of know Renault, you know, comfortable car, French quality and reliability. <laughs> okay, no, no pictures of the trunk, uh, sorry, the trunk, but uh, I've seen it that it has tiny trunk because they probably put some of the battery cells in the trunk space. And that's why you get, let me just, try, sorry for clicking through the pictures. That's why you actually get some okay uh, space in the back here. Yeah, but um, would I buy this car for 90,000 Nook? Um, I would probably s save up some extra money and get a Zoe. Yeah, even a Zoe is better because this one, what kind of onboard charger does it have? And what about the range? And you know, the, the usable, is it? I guess Zoe owners can, um, can confirm to me that even a, a smaller Zoe has more trunk space than this car and probably more range and as for the charging i don't know too much about it but zoe you can get a zoe with a 43 kilowatt uh, onboard charger or the 22 kilowatt depends which region you live in so i wouldn't buy this car yeah 90,000 000 nook um how long has it been online does it say uh i'm trying to look at the date here uh Okay, whatever, I couldn't find it. I'm a noob, all right. Uh, okay, more triplets. Oh, <laughs> Twisty. Oh, Twisty. Yeah, I tried it before. Oh, shit. That, huh? This one doesn't have the doors. So, I, huh? I thought it was, I, I thought it was standard with doors. Okay, so you can get a Twisty without doors even. <sighs> yeah, I tried this car. And it's like the the least comfort you can get in in a so-called car but this one is not registered as an uh, as a car it's uh, it's also a, a motorcycle you know that same classification so yes you will never have a, ever have to pay a toll road and it's tiny so you can you can park wherever you want in almost wherever you want in the city you know so 2012 twisty wow oh, <laughs> uh it has only done 15,000 kilometers <laughs> 18 horsepower so um you i mean you have to almost drive this car like if you were bicycling or, or what happens if it rains what about winter what about schmutz oh um so it's a bit uh okay oh okay wifey came home but again i i guess it depends on your needs but I wouldn't buy this car for 90,000 nook. Um, even how, I mean, no matter how much money I think I will save by not having to pay toll road, even a cheaper leaf would be better or a cheaper triplet. Um, more leaves, 90,000, okay, triplets, leaf, triplets, yeah, the leaves and triplets, they really dominate this uh, lower, sec lower segment here, okay. And the sub uh, 100,000, uh, there was a sculpture, some more vans, there was, uh, okay, some. Uh, smart for two coupe. Oh, really? Uh, what is different when this car? Oh, it's a, it's a red. Uh, it's a coupe. Okay, whatever. Um, I can't spend too much time. Oh, okay. What is this? Fiat 500. Okay, let me, let me take a look at this one. It's a Fiat 500e. I'm currently borrowing one right now. And it, okay, I have to admit, it's it's a it's a good, okay, it's, <laughs> sorry you heard Dolly and wifey, <laughs> they just came home uh, after taking a walk. So, uh, the Fiat 500e, okay, you know, it's, um, 
I guess it's a good looking car, you know, it's a, like an icon, but it was built fossil and then forcefully muted to uh, electric. And many people claim that it's a compliance car. So, um, but uh, okay, trunk space is horrible in this car, but at least it has back seats. So you can fold the back seats and still have, then you get okay trunk space. So, you know, of course, if you compare this to a Leaf or something, then it sucks space-wise. But if you compare it to like a Think, then it has way more space than those cars. So, uh, in a way, I would say that yes, it's it's a it's a better car than the than the Think even before I've tried the Think. But compared to a Leaf, uh, no, and it doesn't have fast charging. Let me see. Do they do they say anything about the charging stuff here? No. So it it cannot DC fast charge. The only way to charge its car is. Um, uh, with the onboard charger, which is uh, uh, six, some six kilowatt, uh, uh, six point six kilowatt or something like that, so it will usually take like three, maybe th some three hours to fully charge it, and then you can drive about uh, eighty kilometers. So, um, but what is a little bit uh, unusual with this car compared to some of the the other cars in the same price range is that it has one hundred fourteen horsepower. It even beats the Leaf, which has. 107 so uh, it's a powerful f car and also fairly light now i tried to find um why don't they uh, supply the info here but it's it's a it's a light car uh and and pretty sippy it, sometimes it feels like a an i3 so that's that's good uh but for 100,000 nook um yeah so then i mean People who want to buy a Fiat 500e, they they probably don't care too much about the money because if you want a practical car, you will go for a Leaf instead. Uh, it has fast charging, it has more space, it has um, five seats, you know. Uh, whereas people who want the Fiat, they just want a different car. Yeah. Okay, let me see. Peugeot Partner. Uh, ooh, okay, let me check a look at this one. So another van, another, another pizza car um similar to the one we saw right yeah okay <laughs> oh, sorry sorry we have some uh, family stuff going on here <laughs> um okay let me look okay let me skip this video it's gonna be so long um citron berlingo oh it was sold uh let's skip that one i, I think most people are not too interested in the van so um Peugeot partner okay smart for two smart all right more smarts uh, more leaves. Now we are entering the hundred thousand uh, price range, and I see um, more and more, more and more leaves now. But still, lots of triplets. Oh, this one, yes, uh, a Volkswagen. Uh, Why well, they? It's a Volkswagen E up. So this is the cheapest E up you can get. I'll try that car. It's um, it's actually a, a, a nice nice car. So um, it supports fast uh, charging, which is important. What? Someone left the eggs there. <laughs> um, what is this? Studded tires? Yeah, it's on studded tires. So, oh, there's Tesla charging there. So it's um, it's like the little brother to um, uh, to um, the Golf. But you see, very basic interior. Okay, so uh, it's based on the the fossil up, and they just call it the E up, and um, not any fancy touchscreen or anything like that. Just I mean, well, actually, there's one touchscreen here, I guess. Uh, but in the, in the car I tested, I didn't figure. I mean, I didn't figure out how to make it work. So I'm like, okay, whatever. So the trunk space here is actually uh, quite impressive for just a small car. It has the same space as an i3, yeah, which is uh, four um, four banana boxes in the trunk because you can open the space under the trunk here, and then if you fall on the seats, you get you can fit 14 boxes. So exact same as. Um, i3 yeah and i3 is way larger than the e up like in dimension wise you know, exterior wise and you have app support which is good it claims 132 kilometers at a gone base so uh, the e up is um it's it's actually um a good choice if you don't want a leaf for some reason so you can choose between a leaf or an e up if you come in this price range let me see this one has done uh, almost 100,000 kilometers okay it has 82 horsepower so slightly less powerful than the the leaf but it's way lighter than the leaf you see so i guess uh, without doing the crazy math here uh, this one is about 1100 ish 1000 yeah kilos so it's like four five hundred kilos less than leaf so the 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 power to weight ratio on this one 
it's probably better and it's probably um, it's better to drive like it handles better uh, around corners so uh, this cell okay it sell, wants to sell it because um, it needs a bigger car yeah um, and okay it's, it's claim okay it takes 20 minutes to charge it the faster yeah you know what that, that that claim is is somewhat true because this this car okay it doesn't have active cooling the leaf doesn't have active cooling either but uh, people have been reporting, and I also experienced it, that it charges fairly fast and doesn't seem to uh, overheat even after several fast charging sessions. So, you know, I bet if I tried to race uh, a Leaf versus the EOP on a long trip, the EOP would win. Uh, EOP also has fairly high um, um, nominal voltage versus the, um, the Golf, which for some reason has a lower voltage. So that means uh, that at fast charges, you, you get faster charging speed on on the EOP versus the Golf, but of course the Golf has a bigger battery and is a bigger car. But um, I would say it's not too bad of a choice to go for the EOP if you feel like it. Okay, let's just keep going. Okay, more leaves, more leaves. Uh, you see now we suddenly start seeing more leaves and less triplets. Let me check out this one. It's a, it's a Twissy. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what this is. This one at least has the doors, but it doesn't have the optional windows. Um, Personally, uh, 105,000 Nook for a Twisty that can barely go 80 kilometers per hour. And I think it's actually, I, I think it's not allowed to even drive on motorways because it has a different classification. Uh, it has only, it only done 3,700 kilometers. It can only charge, slow charge via Shuko. Uh, the charger and all stuff is on the front there. So, I personally wouldn't buy, I wouldn't pay 105,000 for this car, you know, you really, you really have to be a rich bastard if you want to buy this car just for commuting. Um, so if this car costs, let's say 20,000 Nook or even 40,000 Nook, then I would consider it, but not 105,000. So sorry, Mac. Uh, okay, Peugeot I1, uh, blah, blah, okay, blah, blah. Okay, more uh, more Fiat, more Twizzies. Uh, do we see any other cars now? Okay, um, same 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 ones are, are repeating here. Okay, uh, yeah, I see you can probably see. That I don't have to comment all of them. Uh, Smart, yeah, official partner, same cars, uh, similar cars. Oh, the first Zoe. Oh yes, oh yes. There you go. Now we're talking. So, how much is this Zoe? It's it's hundred ten thousand. Uh, the the fluence was some ninety thousand, wasn't it? I would gladly pay twenty thousand extra to get the Zoe because it's a way better EV. Um, like space wise, probably efficiency wise, range wise, you know, charging wise. Uh, it's it's like Renault. They start they pro I don't know the whole history from Renault, but they maybe they started with the fluence and they were like. Mm, Okay, uh, and then they, they learned something and they made Zoe. So the Zoe is like the next generation. Uh, yeah. Oh, the bucket, yeah, <laughs> funny. In Norway, we have this, um, this um, IT uh, um, uh, electricity network thing where uh, only Norway and Albania has. So uh, if you want to charge, normally you, you need TN uh, network to charge uh, Zoe. Uh, but with this one, it's it's a transformer. Uh, I think it's a 3.6 kilowatt transformer or something. Um, so you can plug it in at the household plug at, uh, at in, in Norway and you can charge the Zoe. So it's, it's actually very common in Norway to have this bucket. Yeah, you just have to, you have to carry around. <laughs> so if you, if you visit your, uh, your mom or whatever, and then she doesn't have uh, the, the TN, then you have to use this bucket or at public charging stations. Yeah, so it fits in the trunk. There's plenty of space actually for a small car. So it's uh, okay, 88 horsepower, 1.4 kilos, so 1.4 tons, metric tons. So it's lighter than a Leaf. I often use Leaf as a reference because it's such a common uh, car. It's a common EV. I bought the Elbil to Kona, but it's not going to be the answer. Okay, <laughs> funny. Uh, it says that this. Yeah, uh, he bought this car to his wife, and then uh, but then the range inside it took. Uh, took it took her <laughs> so um yeah they're going to sell it um but it's um hmm, i wonder it says renault zoe 23 kilowatt uh, no 
Oh, okay, okay. It's it's, it's a 22 kilowatt uh, charger, I guess. But I don't know if this one has a 43 kilowatt common on charger. Uh, we can't trust this info 100%. So, but uh, no, no, no. Of course, it's it's uh, it's 23 kilowatt hours. Well, it's actually a 22 kilowatt hours. The the Zoe. So yeah, yeah of course. Um, Okay, what else do we got here? Uh, by the way, would, would I buy that one? Yes, I would buy it if I'm in that market for it. But again, you know, people are different. Some people um, still want to buy a Leaf versus a Zoe, but I guess it's, it depends on your preference. Here's another e Oh, nice, nice. Okay, uh, you see, it's, it's funny. Now, in this ad, they say 60 kilowatt, and that is correct. It's the, mo the, the motor power is 60 kilowatt. So um, you will see that uh, the whole kilowatt, kilowatt hour is just a big, big mess. A big cluster fox. <laughs> no, okay. Uh, oh, dub plus. Uh, uh, let's not to waste too much time on this car. Uh, we have seen it before. Oh, another Zoe. Uh, okay, this one. <laughs> um, all right. I, you know, actually, I, I would look through some of these ads before, so it's, it's not the first time I see it. So it's a it's a nice looking color. I like that. Okay. Uh, it seems to be in better shape. Maybe it's just a better photographer. Oh, actually, no. Forget about that. But uh, let me just show you, um, the trunk space is fairly huge for this tiny car because this, the Zoe is actually born electric unlike um, i3. So Zoe was made only to be pure electric. There, there is no fossil Zoe and there is no Zoe with uh, a range extender. So the Zoe is a pure electric car and they designed it to be electric and that is good. And you see the interior is way better than uh, let's say um, uh, the triplets but again you know the triplets is half the price of a Zoe so overall you get a way better car than um, uh, yeah some of the other ones I mentioned uh, space wise okay I guess uh, well, actually a new question here is is a Zoe actually oh I like this one um, so uh, this is the key uh, it's similar to the other Renault uh, I had the, the Renault Laguna 2 also had this kind of credit card uh, key fob and you see there's a button here which is preheating um, because if you um, there's also an app for so you can preheat via the app but if you borrow the car uh, you can use the, this button uh, hold down hold it down for like five seconds and then the car will preheat for uh, I think it was 15 minutes that is a very nice feature. Not many EVs have that. I know ENV 200 has it, but for some reason, Leaf doesn't have it. <laughs> um, so, uh, but the downside with the Zoe is that when you are charging, the heater won't run. <laughs> yeah, can you believe that? So there's the way, the workaround that I found that afterwards, after I've been freezing in the car uh, on my trip, is that you can hold down this button while you are in sitting in the car charging, then you will preheat the car. Uh, but the, on, the downside is that the fans will run at full speed. Yes, full speed uh, for 15 minutes and then it stops and then you have to re reactivate that one. But it's like a workaround. It's a silly workaround, but yeah. Uh, and then this one, it says a Renault Zoe 43 kilowatt hours. I was like, what? No, this can't be the 41 kilowatt hour Zoe. Uh, and then it says it's 214 uh, model. So, <laughs> in this case, the 43 kilowatt hour is actually the 43 kilowatt. So it has the 43 kilowatt come alone onboard charger. Yeah. Uh, now the downside in Norway is that um, there aren't many 43 kilowatt um, uh, like char like charging stations around Norway. So um, you're kind of like limited to where you can so-called fast well actually i would yeah i would call it fast charging when you have 43 kilowatt ac uh, you get about 36 kilowatt uh, after charging loss which is still slower than let's say a leaf or a, an, a, an an e up but um for for 110,000 uh, nook i would say it's a, it's a good buy if you want to get zoe all right, keep going. Uh, more leaves, more leaves, and some vans. Okay, uh, E up again. Um, do we have something else here? Uh, leaves, E up. Yeah, so more and more, more and more leaves, more and more E ups. Uh, some smart. Uh, I'm Okay, skip. Okay, let's see what we have here. Uh, e up. Yeah, same, 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 same. So, you know, <laughs> so I you know. Um, I don't edit out this because I just want to show you guys 
what is available here and you can also get a glimpse of the price and now we are uh, in the 120,000 nook price range and you see some of you guys will be like damn that's a lot of EVs for sale in Norway yes that's right baby um what else we had okay lots of stuff okay twisty all right i'll just scroll okay let's uh, let's um oh the first one now okay yes remember this one look at it yesterday uh -huh. a little bit got a little bit excited here so i i touched the zoom button okay so the first env 200 yes the env 200 it's way bigger than the other um uh, vans in this um price range so um it's, uh, I tried it many times. I've driven it many, many times. Summer, winter, I hauled stuff in it. Um, so I, I would say it's, um, it's one of the best, uh, maybe even the best uh, EV uh, van. It supports faster. Look, look at all this space. And you can also get, let me see. I'm not sure if this one has a door, but you can get the door on both sides for easier load of stuff. And since this is the man, it's also there's there's a Nevalia. Uh, this one has the doors on both sides here because that's that's how the van is, the van version, you know, with the cargo van. Whereas if you go for Evalia, which is the six, uh, five, or the seven seater, which is like a passenger car, and they have windows here instead, then you you don't get the the two split doors here. Then then you get that hatch opening, the door open upwards. And I guess some carpenters can tell me why the the van version they have this, the doors that open on each side. I think there was a good reason for it. Uh, yeah, how you see the, the door splits like this. Uh, but uh, for hundred and hundred twenty five thousand nook, you get an ENV two hundred. This is the twenty four kilowatt hour. Uh, well, it has the same drivetrain as the Leaf, but it has active cooling. The Leaf doesn't have active cooling. Uh, I guess uh, Nissan uh, designers, they found out that there, there is more space in the ENV 200 to put some, some cooling fans or whatever. Uh, but uh, what does that mean, by the way? Uh, Leaf tends to overheat after you have fast charged too many times. So then you get reduced the charging speed with the Leaf. But with ENV 200, you have a fan cooling down the battery, which is good. But what I learned in the past is that the cooling is only active when you are um, uh, plugged in and charging. Uh, if you drive the car, cooling is not active. Then there's only some passive cooling. So you have to be stopped and you have to be plugged in. And not only that, the car has to be powered on. If you shut down the car and leave and go take a bite and eat something, then the cooling is not active. So. <laughs> it's um it's somewhat limited but i guess uh people carpenters or you know plumbers who use this car they probably don't fast charge that much anymore most of the time they should be done i mean they should be busy working hard rather than hardly working right uh wow it has, it has only done twenty six thousand nine hundred uh, kilometers not too high uh, mileage yeah um so it's it's a good price it's a very good price for the car now, I don't know what kind of equipment it has, like a backup camera, whatever. I didn't check that uh, tutorial, but uh, it's, it, if you just want, let me just quickly check the pictures here. Uh, ah, yes, yes. <laughs> it's like the, the, the stripped down base model. Uh, they didn't show it that well in the picture here, but you can see it here. It doesn't have the big screen, the nice and big touch screen that you have in the more uh, equipped version. So. That's why this one is somewhat cheap, but if you don't care about that touchscreen, if you're busy using your cell phone instead while you're driving, then you can go with this one, yeah. Um, right, more Fiat 500, uh, okay. Um, Renault Twissy in 10, okay, Twissy. More Zoe, okay, hmm, 120,000, 125 now. Let's just keep scrolling, keep scrolling. Uh, let's uh, whoa okay yeah I remember this one um, it's a Ford Focus electric okay um, I don't have much nice things to say about this car I tried it briefly that was the even the new version so let's take a look here so the charge port is on that side all right this one is a compliance car so compliance car are usually uh, those cars that were made to lower the overall emission for a manufacturer. And I believe this one was also a compliance car because they didn't even try to make the car a good EV. 
let me see if I can find any uh, okay interior looks okay you know it looks like a normal car yeah what is normal by the way well uh, people tend to refer to normal as um, as um, fossil car wow it doesn't have electric seats Ooh, not too bad not too shabby yeah it's good that, oh, wow look at those cracks on the leather here sheet well it looks very fossil car you know yeah oh those what the heck is that are this, is that a feature it must be a feature can't be uh, uh, wear and tear, okay? Uh, so I guess it's a nice, it's a, it's a, it's a nice car, but it's not a nice EV because oh, those are perforations. Ah, oh, okay, I'm a noob. Ah, oh, it's a perforated seat. Oh, okay, leather seat and stuff. Uh, here you see. Oh yeah, okay. Um, but that, that, look, look, look. This is just what I was gonna show you because. The rear seat is fairly good, the rear seat space, but they put the battery pack here and probably somewhere else. So it has like, really just look at this and you can see the reference here, how, how little trunk space you have here. Even if you take out the partial shelf, try to fit in a, a, a stroller here or some large suitcases. How the heck are you gonna bring, the, this is not a family car. It's a poor excuse for an EV, you know? Uh, I'm not saying that, you know, Everyone who buys an EV are going to haul around with nimber tasks. No, but people who buy an EV, they probably want to use it as a day-to-day -day car. Maybe they have kids, they have family, or they just want to bring stuff. So this car is like weird, you know. Um, and um, let me just double check if they say anything about it here. No, but the problem with the first version of the Focus. This one, it says a 2013 model. It has done only 45,750 kilometers, probably for a very good reason. Uh, oh, it has 146 horsepower. That's kind of powerful. But the problem with the, the Ford Focus is that it doesn't support fast charging. So basically you have a car with tiny trunk space, no fast charging. The only way to charge it is via the plug here. Uh, probably takes 10 hours to charge it up. So it's it's like uh, you can use it as a commuter car, uh, but uh, when you want to take it for something else, then no. So hasta la vista. 129,000 nuk for that car is a rip off. Like if someone tried to sell it for, let's say, um, 50,000 nuk, then I would consider it, but not 130,000 nuk. Then you should buy uh, a Leaf or, or E-Up, or even a Zoe, <laughs> that would be my, my, my newest joke. Even a Zoe, even this E-Up for the same price is way better than that, probably even more space than that. So yeah, okay, that's my rant about the Ford Focus. But all right, okay, and, and the Focus F Defense, the new Focus has finally a fast charging support. Uh, that one came in 2017, 17, I believe. All right, let's just keep going here. Um, so um, I realize now that this is a very long video. So uh, if you guys are still watching, then you're probably on your second round of drinks now and your popcorn is out. You have to pop some more microwave popcorn or you have to order more Chinese food. All right, uh, let's keep rolling, keep scrolling, keep scrolling, keep scrolling. Okay, um, uh, whoa, lots of Fiat 500Es for sale. Hmm. <laughs> uh okay smart for two uh yep okay i think this is the point where i should start applying some filter because there, there's simply too many cars i have to scroll through what the heck yeah this i remember this one it's um it's called city spirit on andre city spirit wasn't it double check the various colors and again this is a uh i guess it's a motor motorcycle classification look you have your Gucci, Gucci uh, bag there. You're just a city woman. You just drive around between your meetings. You probably have to juice up a lot between each meeting. You, you have to make sure that those meetings are at least two, two hours long. And what, what, what happened to the headrest on this side? What, you don't have passengers? Shit, what? Is this a wheel? Ah, oh, shit. Oh, it has a touch screen. Okay, but um, you know, I'm not gonna bash this car too much because it probably has its use, which is to, it's like for urban transportation. Uh, it's branch banking new. And um, uh, what, 10 horsepower? Really? 10 horsepower? What is the weight of this car? It's probably light, let's say 600 kilos. Um, so it's cheap. 
Okay, maximum speed is uh, 80 kilometers per hour. It says that it has six batteries, 100 amp hours. Okay, I looked at this before, so it, it seems to have 7.2 kilowatt hours. Okay, the weight is 613 uh, kilos. Uh, it's tiny, like 245 times. You know, I wonder, I might be able to fit this car in my trailer. Yeah, that's how small it is. Okay, lade, teed, oh yeah, almost beat it. Um, six to eight hours, so it takes, uh, it can only charge on, uh, on um, the household plug, Shuko. But I guess it's, uh, it's, um, it's a, uh, it's a t small car, two-seater, but uh, for that price, 130,000 nook. Mm -hmm. Again, um, I would consider buying it if it was 50,000 nook. Uh, of course, a branch bank in you. So yeah, uh, not for 130,000. Okay, we have more Zoe's here for 23. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the Zoe has 20. Huh? Why do people keep saying 23 kilowatt? I thought the Zoe had 22 kilowatt hour uh, pack, not 23. Um, all right, let's just keep scrolling. Okay, you start seeing more and more uh, the same cars here. All right, uh, let me... Um, let me go to the next page and then uh, let me see. Okay, and then switch view here. So now we see three cars in a row instead. So it goes like this, this, and the, oh yes, yes. Now we're cooking. Oh, 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 ho, ho. <laughs> yes, Kia Soul EV. Now, now, now we're talking. Uh, how? What? Let me see. What is the entry price here? Oh, 100, 147,000 nook. Then you get what well, it says. No, this is incorrect. Kia Soul 24 kilowatt hour. No, it's um, it's 27 kilowatt hour available energy, and uh, I think this car has about 30 kilowatt hours total. So uh, it's it's actually a damn good car for this price. It can compete with a 30 kilowatt hour Leaf, or probably even beat it. So it has tons of space, more space than you you uh, can imagine because it's it's very boxy. So. Um, but again, it depends that space like you have lots of headroom. This one doesn't have the panorama roof, but uh, Let's see we should see some more pictures. Okay. Whoa, hoo -hoo. Textile seats. Hmm. Oh, what is that schmutz? Oh, no, did someone spill water here? Oh, shit, but look look here. Okay. It has a touch screen uh, the infotainment system here and um, and the whole user in uh, like user experience with this car and the whole you know range and charging is just superb for this price range so i highly recommend these three guys <laughs> i don't know why they they show the pictures of these guys i'm oh, probably okay i have the the oh, okay probably so i can recognize ah oh, yes i remember david yeah i saw you okay no but um and huh? nissan oh, okay just some standard picture but you know this car okay this car has the charging port in the front by the way it has a Chadamo plug, but it can fast charge on Chadamo and it usually charges fairly fast. You get like 45 kilowatt fast charging speed and it has active cooling. So unlike the Leaf, uh, which will overheat after a while, this one won't overheat. It performs superb. And it also has, of course, the onboard charger, 6.6 uh, kilowatt onboard charger. So I highly recommend this car for the price here. Um, if you can live with it, if you can live with the so, somewhat short car, short um, short trunk, but fairly deep trunk, there's no space. I mean, there's no uh, uh, picture of the trunk here, but um, um, you can see, you can probably find some of my videos. Yeah, I've tested this car many, many times. I love it. Uh, the only downside with this, uh, this uh, <laughs> soul is that, just look at it. Wait, let me see if I can find a better picture of it. No, okay, but just look at it. It it has the aerodynamic as a brick. So if you know that you will drive fast on the motorway, let's say you want to drive at 120 kilometers per hour, then you better look at uh, some other cars instead because it will be very thirsty, yeah. But if you can still make it to your destination and charge there or go back again, then I guess it doesn't matter. It's, it's a good car for the money. 100,000 kilometers uh, on the odometer. You, I don't think you have to worry too much because, um, like I mentioned, you know, this car has uh, uh, some about 30 kilowatt hour um, uh, capacity, and uh, there is always all, all the EVs they have um, they call it um, a bricking protection, which is a, a lower buffer in the battery, which you cannot access. It's to protect the battery, but also many cars like this one has also a buffer on top, 
So it will charge fairly fast and it will show 100%, but the true state of charge and the true percentage is not 100%, it's probably like 90, 95%. And that means that when you charge this to 100%, uh, you don't really wear it down that, that fast. And because it has active cooling, uh, it probably has good range even after 100,000 kilometers. So if you, if you compare, this is just my empty claim, you know, is that if you compare this car's um, uh, battery capacity left at 100,000 kilometers versus a Leaf, I bet this, this one probably has, let's say, 90% um, left whereas the leaf might be down to 80%, yeah. So good car, good car, yeah. Um, let's see, more leaves. Um, now this, it's not very easy for me to, uh, to identify the, the leaf with a, with a 30 kilowatt hour pack. Some of these, they say 24, 24, okay. Whoa, whoa, I wonder if this one didn't show up yesterday when I look at it. It's, a, it's the first BMW i3 to show up on the list here. So the i3 is, um, it's a cool car. It's a nice car, actually. Like, um, I like it. I like many aspects of it. Like the, the wide open space here, it's just, it's marvelous. And the fact that this car was made uh, almost as a pure EV. When I say almost, because they actually made it as a, a range extender, but it still was designed to be, you know, uh, electric-ish, yeah. So, uh, trunk space is, is good uh, compared to uh, many, well, and actually, how do I say this? It, it, trunk space is good compared to those tiny, uh, tiny triplets or whatever, but uh, not compared to Leaf. Yeah, Leaf will beat this by far. So if trunk space is important for you, then no. But it has 170 horsepower. It's um, active cool battery. So it has many of those, uh, it ticks many of those boxes that uh, I consider important as an EV. Uh, of course, it can fast charge. It has the CCS plug, which is an advantage nowadays. Um, so let me check spec here. Uh, so, okay, it has done 68,000 kilometers. And um, I don't think the degradation here is that great uh, because uh, also the, the i3 also has a, a buffer on top. So you can't, you can't charge it to true 100%. So um, like actually you, the Leaf you can, um, that's what I heard, I have to confirm it, but uh, I claim that the Leaf, when you charge 100%, it, it is actually 100%. Uh, you can look at that cell uh, voltage. So um, it's, um, why is this car somewhat cheap-ish? I don't know, it's 148,000 Nook. It's it doesn't say, but I'm pretty sure this is 2014. Yeah, so this one is the 22 kilowatt hour version. So the the, the smallest pack. Yeah, uh, let me see. Do they say anything here? Blah, blah, blah. Now, see, in most most ads they don't really tell you much about the car. Like I don't know why you have to you have to almost know what what this car is about. You know, so. It's a fun car to drive. I have to say that you know it's light, 1,200 kilos, uh, 170 horsepower. And the, the downside is that it's somewhat thirsty at high speed because just look at the shape here, and also it's somewhat unstable at higher speed. If you go at 120 kilometers per hour, then it's like a little bit unstable. And I'm not sure about this car, but uh, the i3 uh, does it have uh, this one? Does it does it have adaptive cruise control? Um, I can't find it here, but uh, constant fartshole. Oh no, this this one has the the, the regular um, uh, cruise control. But um, pay attention that um, um, the i3 is not equipped with um, a, a radar like most other EVs. I mean, other cars with adaptive cruise control. So the i3 only relies on camera, and that is actually a disadvantage in low sun and in some other driving conditions that it will disable the adaptive cruise control uh, way too many times. So it's a, I think it's a mistake why the heck BMW didn't equip the i3 with a, with a radar instead of just relying only on camera. Like, uh, they have the technology, they have the experience. So it's a puzzle to me because i3 is actually a somewhat expensive EV. Uh, I'm not, not sure why this one appears this, this low price. It could be because it's stripped down i3. But all right, so interesting. Let's just try to quickly skip through the 
the cars. Uh, oh, another Nissan EV200. Oh, okay. Um, 149,000. Yes, that's that's what you can expect actually from most uh, ENV200 uh, nowadays. Uh, this one has glass here. It seems to have. Yes, let me see. Does it have the, the, the bo door on both sides? And oh, okay, okay. This one has the, the infotainment system. So it's a better equipped car. It has the backup camera. So uh, that's probably why it's more expensive. Yeah, see the backup camera, so ooh, it's nice. I like it. It has a heated seat, heated steering wheel, all the stuff that a carpenter would need. Um, just standard cruise control, no adaptive cruise control. Tons of space. Yes, uh, doors on each side. Yeah, so perfect car for carpenters like Jürgen Winter Larsen. <laughs> um, how many kilometers? 53,000 kilometers. Mm, okay. Uh, Good, good, good. Yeah, it's a, it's a good buy for, for a van, you know. So, 150,000 kilometers for this van, uh, I recommend it. Uh, there, okay. Let me see. So, um, keep going. Uh, what do we got? Oh, another soul. All right, let me check out this out. Okay, another soul. Well, lots of pictures. Uh, so, the previous one was 140 something. This one is 100. Yeah, it's a similar price. Okay. A different color. Uh, does it have anything else? Uh, let me check. You, you can find a lot just by skipping through the pictures. Let's go quickly here. Um, uh, you can you can spot lots of details or features with the car. Uh, here you see the trunk, by the way. Uh, I think you didn't see that in the earlier video. Oh, it has it has a leather seats. Yeah, that's more expensive. Yes, uh, perforated leather seats, and I believe this one also has the the ventilated seats. Let me see. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a nice car. Uh, it's just depends on the seat though. Uh, you might not like the seat. Uh, it's somewhat flat. If you have a big fat ass like me, then it works. Um, but it's not a sporty car. It, this is not the car you throw around in the corners. Uh, it's more like a cruiser car. Oh yeah, heated steering wheel. You know, this is it's a well equipped car. It has this 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 button here is for uh, for the speakers. Uh, you can have the like it's like a mood light or music mode where these speakers will light up and then kind of dance with the music or it will just you can change color and stuff so it's, it's a nice nice touch on it um uh yeah yeah, yeah. just uh, the back of camera and the infotainment system is a pleasure to use so again you know uh, it's not a tesla but for 150,000 um, nook a car like this is nice you see two 12 volt outlets most cars they don't only have one 12 volt outlet so this one has two this one is rated 180 watt 120 watt uh so it's it's a uh, yeah i see here uh wait, hold on. that's the ventilation active and the heater active so heated or ventilated seats good stuff lots of goodies for the money yeah um so uh this is in Christian Sun, how many kilometers? 110,000 kilometers, but I don't think that is a problem. Like the other one, you know, it has it has done a lot of uh, mileage, but uh, battery capacity should still be good and you have fast charging, you have active cooling, you have lots of space. So the only problem is that it looks like this. So you either hate the look or you love the look. I personally in the beginning didn't like it, but it kind of like grown on me and I kind of I think it's cool and it's also a good car like technically it's a good EV it has it has active cooling there are some fans in the trunk here uh, cooling down the battery and I think it actually outputs the heat into the cabin so in a way you kind of in summer at least you get you get use of it because then then heat from the battery is spit into the car again you know whereas in summer you probably just can open a window or get rid of that heat somehow but yeah good shit good shit um so let's see uh actually so i mean uh, maybe uh, yeah no maybe i should live stream this instead but uh it's um it's um if i had hundred fifty thousand um nook to buy to buy on a, ca a car an ev i would strongly recommend i mean i would i would strongly consider the kia soul uh, versus the leaf but there's always a butt crack somewhere which is that um, the sole does not have app support that is a disadvantage uh, because if you look at the other cars around here leaf eup uh with other cars uh, at least yeah the, the popular cars like leaf and eup they have app support okay some of these uh the 
the app might suck. I heard on Leaf Owners uh, Group that the, 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 the app is very unresponsive and slow, but at least you have an app support. You can preheat the car, you can check the state of charge. Same with the app, you know, you can do stuff. It's not as good as the Tesla app, but at least it has an app. But then Kia Soul and Hyundai, no app, no Habla, no so for you. Uh, okay, let's move, let's keep moving. Um, uh, what do we got? Okay, Zoe, all right, uh, more Zoe's. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, another i3. Uh, yeah, I don't think I had to check it out. Uh, Peugeot Partner, not too much interested in those vans uh, because, uh, yeah. Actually, let me check something. There was one of them, maybe it was the Peugeot Partner, which has fast charging. Uh, I don't remember which one it was. Um, Peugeot Partner. Uh, let me check. You know, most people, they don't take a picture of the charge port. Yeah, it's a three-seater, okay. Uh, cruise control, well, that's good. Oh, it looks very fossil, like, ah, shit. Um, now, I don't remember if this one had the fast charging option or not, but that is something I consider important as a van because you might have to drive more than, let's say, 50, 100 kilometers per day, and then suddenly you're out of juice and you have to fast charge while you're having a lunch break. So, to me, uh, um, a van should have fast charging support, otherwise it would be very limited. Uh, okay, let me see, just skip her, um, Nissan, yeah, so, the not, I haven't seen any 30 kilowatt hour leaf yet, just a bunch of, wow, there's so many Fiat 500Es for sale here, and I think, m like, all of these Fiats are uh, imported from the US, um, yeah, maybe they're not, people don't buy them, or lots of Fiats, Holy crap, man. Seriously? Okay, and then what are they trying to get? There, there are lots of EVs in the 150,000 nook price range. So if you have that much money for an EV, then you can you can really choose. Actually, that that makes it hard, right, to choose. Like, what the heck are you supposed to get then? Whoa, what about this one? Chevrolet Spark. Okay, so... Um, the Chevrolet Spark is, uh, well, actually, I don't know all the history about this, about the Spark. Uh, I guess it's also a fossil car, but uh, they actually made um, an EV of this. And uh, you see, it kind of resembles a typical fossil car, you know? Uh, oh, what the heck, you have lots of cars there. Okay, but uh, the Spark is, um, it has a tiny battery. Uh, it has 140 horsepower. Uh, okay, okay, there, there, there. Yeah, this one actually is, uh, gives me the info. It says 18.4 kilowatt battery. No, it's an 18.4 kilowatt hour battery, and it says 130 kilometers range or 90 kilometers range in winter, and it can fast charge. It says the fast charging from 10, uh, it's from zero to 80 percent takes 20 minutes. Uh, so I think what I like about this car, I haven't tried it, but 140 horsepower in such a small car and fairly light maybe uh, can i check it no but it's probably fun to drive and it, it supports fast charging so it ticks many of the right boxes uh, but i believe that uh, these cars are imported from usa yeah it's a chevrolet so it's it's us important and uh, i don't know how it is with app support but i guess it's an option uh, whether I should recommend it or not, I'm not sure because uh, for 150,000 Nook, you can choose between uh, i3 or Leaf or Soul. So if it doesn't have app support, then I would say go for a Soul instead. Uh, if you if it supports app for some reason, then maybe you can consider it, or you can also consider some of the other cars. Hey, we have another Ford Focus. Let me check here. This is probably the old Ford Focus. Uh, yes, 2013. So no fast charging support. Hasta la vista. At least for me. Yeah, I mean, depends. If, if you're only looking for a car for local commuting and you just want the Ford, then yeah, you can go for it. So, you know, it's not like, you know, my... It's just my personal opinion about things. So you still have to make up your mind. Uh, uh, and don't, don't say that, oh, you know, Bjorn, he's... he's 
he's always hating on this car, hating on that car, and he, he does this nimbering. I actually don't do the nimbering anymore. I'm just based on the you know, usual need. Let's say, let's say, okay, let's just go back to this one, for, instance, for example, right? Um, let's say if I want to take this car on the, on the road trip from Oslo to Gothenburg and back again with Wifey and Dolly, then um, it wouldn't work that well because it doesn't have fast charging support and it's, uh, it's a 300 kilometer trip just one way. And this one, this car wouldn't make it there in a single charge. And because it has like limited trunk space, then we kind of have to put some, some stuff in the trunk and then Dolly goes in the back seat, strapped in there on this dog uh, thingy. And then, so, you know, yeah, you get my idea. Like, um, you, you, you probably want a car. I mean, you want a car based on your needs. And if you only, if you're, if you're single, unmarried, well, I mean, if you're unmarried, then you're single, right? And you just live an urban life, then yeah, you can go for these uh, urban cars. Then uh, you never, and you, if you never take any long trips, then it doesn't matter. Then you don't care about fast charging support. Another ENV 200. Let me see, is that Evalia? No, let me just quickly check this one out. This is 160,000 Nook. So I wonder why it is more expensive. Probably because it has lower mileage, about 60,000 kilometers mileage. Uh, uh, a navigation, yes, it has the, all, the, all the goodies. Uh, let me just quickly look at the pictures. Um, wait, is this Evalia? It looks like Evalia. Uh, yeah, this is Evalia. Ah, ah, maybe it's a five-seater Evalia. Uh, so, yes, um, so it's actually, you know, it's um, now we're actually touching into a different uh, topic here because how about getting an ENV 200 as a family car? Uh, they, they, they don't, show, don't show, let me check something. Yeah, it's a five-seater. So Evalia comes in a five-seater and a seven-seater. Uh, okay, they don't show here, but there's space for another row in the back here. Uh, this one is a five-seater. So it means that it has ginormous space in the back. Like, believe me, I've tried the Evalia, the seven-seater, and also the van version, and it has more space than uh, a Tesla Model X. It's just insane. Like, just to give you an idea, um, the, the, the van version, um, we tried the van version to put uh, banana boxes, and uh, most cars, you know, they can fit uh, about 15 to 18 banana boxes, and uh, maybe, they're, okay, the, the, the bigger cars like e Nero could fit in 20 boxes, and then you have the Teslas, they could fit, um, they could fit like 28 and um, so 28 boxes right in the Tesla Model X that's a big family car but e ENV 200 could fit over 50 boxes we we ran out of uh, of uh, okay sorry do you hear some noise it's just dolly running around um, so we ran out of boxes so it has ginormous space so you can imagine if you have a big family, let's say you're a family of five, um, two adults, three kids, maybe the kids are somewhat grown up, uh, some of them, you have lots of space in the trunk. Un unfortunately, I can't show you the trunk. There's no, no uh, picture of the trunk here, but uh, it's, a, it's a good option for a family car like that. But there's a but because this one is from 2015. So the... the the battery is still 24 kilowatt hours and that means um, because it's a van it has aerodynamic as a brick and you can usually count on getting about 80 to 120 kilometers in a full charge but then if you take it on a long trip you don't charge it to 100 percent every time so then you charge it to about 70 80 percent right and then you can only drive about, let's say, 60 to 80 kilometers between each charge. So, um, how do I say this? You, you have a family car, you can, you can take it on local runs, like, you know, the soccer mom car. Yes, that works great. But for a long trip, a uh, holiday, then expect a lot of charging and planning. So, in that regard, I would recommend uh, the 40 kilowatt hour Leaf. Uh, sorry, the 40 kilowatt hour um, um, 
ENV200, but those are way more expensive and they're kind of new, so you probably have to pay uh, 100,000 more for it. Yeah. So um, let's see, let's just um, check out what, what else do we have. Oh man, this video is so long, so uh, it's um, for focus, okay. I think we have to start skipping soon because uh, there's just, um, once we enter a certain price range like we have now, then um, you get so many cars, you know, so many cars you have to scroll through. Here's another ENV200, uh, let me just quickly check it out uh, in case you guys are wondering. Um, what, that's all, that's it? Okay, whatever, I'm not gonna look at it. Uh, whoa, okay, now finally, um, the e-golf, the first e-golf to show up. So um, this is way like, well, okay, it's, it's bigger than um, e-up and also has way more comfort. It's way more quiet than the e-up. E-up is just very stripped down basic car. This feels more like a, like a, what you call it, a normal car. It's way better looking inside, outside, more premium. Um, you have the big, big touch screen here, that's nice. Um, bigger battery, more range. This one, they call it 190, you know, the 190 kilometers, probably NEDC range, but uh, what you can expect is about 100, 120 kilometers of range, depending on driving conditions. Uh, not too many pictures, um, but this car, when it was new, it cost twice as much, uh, probably, you know, actually maybe more than twice as much. So. 160,000 nook for, for a Leaf, oh, sorry, for, for a Golf, it's actually not too bad. Uh, it has the um, 24 kilowatt hour, well it's 24 dot something, but let's, it has 24 kilowatt hour battery. 120 horsepower is per, fairly powerful. Uh, I think it's slightly lighter than the, the Leaf. So um, if you don't want a Leaf and you had the money for uh, e-Golf, then you should really consider this one. Now, uh, let me see, oops, uh, let me check something. Uh, okay. Uh, but it has less space than, what? Did I actually check the Leaf? No, I think, did I check the, the space on uh, Golf yet? No, but I think, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I, I, I don't remember right now, but I'm pretty sure that Leaf has more space than Golf. Um, uh, the trunk space, but but uh, we I don't know about this one. Does it have adaptive cruise control? Uh, let me check here. Cruise control. Oh yes, oh yes. You see, so um, I should mention that all the other cars we have seen in the past, um, they might not have adapt. These the Leafs don't have adaptive cruise control. Uh, so we don't have adaptive cruise control, especially not Fiat 500e, and uh, I'm not sure about the, the i3s that showed up if they have adaptive cruise control or not. Let me check here. Um, cruise control, it doesn't say. So, we're, um, so that means that the Golf in this price range might be one of the few cars which has adaptive cruise control. And the good thing about the Golf is that it has a radar Let's see if I can find a picture of the front there. Mm, no, no, but uh, the radar should be placed here and it's heated. So I, I have tested the old, uh, the, the old uh, Golf and it works great in winter. So um, this is a good commuter car because, uh, yeah, because of stop and go traffic and adaptive cruise control. Uh, now the Leaf, uh, just like um, E-Up does not have um, uh, an active cooling. So this one will, um, they call it rapid gate, which was something someone invented for Leaf. So you can say that this one will also rapid gate. If you fast charge too many times in one day, and if it's a hot summer day, then you will have slower charging rate. But it seems like, based on my tests, I haven't done a like, direct test, but it seems like the Golf will overheat less than the Leaf. It could be because the Golf has lower um, nominal voltage than Leaf uh, and that uh, it charges slightly slower than Leaf, but maybe the Golf battery has less internal resistance or something, but um, it's a good choice. Yeah, for, for 160,000 Nook, and let me see, it's for 2014. So in five years, it has dropped a lot in price and 98,000 uh, kilometers. And also the Leaf, yes, the Leaf, oh sorry, I keep saying Leaf, sorry about that. Uh, Golf also has a top buffer. Uh, so if you charge it to 100%, it will finish to 100% fairly fast. Uh, it, I think it, it charges that at, okay, I don't remember, but it charges fairly fast to 
and um, and maybe I'm just guessing that 100% is really just 95% or so. Um, so that means that the, the 98,000 kilometers of uh, odometer still shouldn't be too bad for the capacity. Maybe I'm just guessing. Maybe you still have 90% capacity. Um, all right, let's just keep going a little bit. Uh, do we have any more interesting stuff here? Oh, another. Oh, Soul exclusive. Let's check out this one. Uh, let me see if this one has the, the panorama roof. Uh, exclusive is the top spec uh, Soul. Uh, why do you have two pictures that are that's almost similar? Yeah, okay, this one bothered to open the charge port for me. Okay. Uh, yeah, fairly good space there. No, we don't see that. Uh, uh, nope, okay, whatever. Uh, let's just close this one. I wanna look at it. So, um, golf, okay, E up, uh, leaf, um, leaf. Do we see any 30 kilowatt of a leaf yet? Hmm, those are, those seems to be pricey. It seems like those 30 kilowatt of a leaf has a, a higher entry uh, price. Smart for four. Let's check this one out. So it's a, it's like a large a stretch version of the Smart for two. I don't know too much about these cars, so I'm not going to to talk about stuff I don't know about. So um, it's 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 just a Smart that is, has been stretched. And what oh, oh, the heck? I really don't like this this so-called classic design of uh, whoa! What the heck? Okay, whatever. Let's. I think enough. Um, One hundred sixty-five thousand uh, for uh, for a Smart. Okay, uh, let's just keep looking. Okay, I'm, just, I'm going to show you this one. It's a, it's a Tassari. So the Tassari is also um, classified as a, you know, the motorcycle uh, class thingy. So you don't have to ever pay um, toll road. It's tiny. Look, it's just tiny. Uh, I think this is a branch banking new one, right? Yeah, one kilometer. Yeah, it's brand new, two seater. Um, so I heard from Marcus Beal that it's a horrible car. So I don't know. I I will not say anything because I haven't tried it. Yeah. Um, Volkswagen. Okay. Golf. All right. I three. Max. Okay. This one has adaptive cruise control. Yes. Finally, we found a car with adaptive cruise control. Uh, let me check here. Uh, the screen it probably has a big screen. Yes, the big screen. Uh, the screen comes in a small and big version. So if you go for a strip round, you get a smaller screen. Uh, this one is standard. I like it. I like this screen. I wish it was a little bit bigger so you can show more info. Um, so yeah, the uh, the i3 with adaptive cruise control for 168,000. So yes, if, again, if you're looking for a commuter car, then the i3 is a comfortable car. Yeah, I just uh, I'm not too fond of the seats though. Let me show you here. There was a picture of the seat, right? Uh, was it there? Yeah, yeah, this one. So I'm like, mm, it's a little bit flat. I feel like it doesn't give me that that support. And of course, people with with long legs, they there there's no extension here. But not many cars has it. I think only e golf has that extension on the on the leg here. Yeah. So, um, but what, I mean, one thing I like about the uh, e golf and um, and i3, uh, I forgot to mention that by the way, is that. Um, the steering wheel will adjust outwards and up and down. Uh, leaf will only go, uh, which direction was it again? Um, don't remember, I think it was, yeah, up and down. Oh, sorry, sorry, in and out. Uh, Soul goes, oh shit, I've driven Soul so many times. Um, but I know that e-golf can adjust up and down and all that, so uh, I don't remember. I should collect the data and <laughs> try to memorize them, but uh, that is somewhat important to find the right driving position uh, to be able to adjust uh, in, in two, uh, two axes and just, just one. So uh, in that regard, I, I claim that LEAF is um, it's somewhat limited because you cannot get the, the best. I mean, you can get a good seating position, but then your arms might be stretched too far out or something like that. So yeah, that is an advantage with really, the i3. Uh, what is it? Ford Focus again. Okay. Uh, Leaf. Uh, e Golf. Uh, so, do we have any interesting stuff here that we should see in this price range? Uh, maybe I skipped. Did I skip any Leaf? I shouldn't see. Where Where are the 30 kilowatt hour Leafs? I haven't seen it yet. 
You see now, by the way, now when, when we are in this price range, 170,000 NUC, then you don't see triplets anymore because those are cheaper and I guess people don't sell new triplets. So um, just quickly see a smart for four. Okay, another one. Um, I don't think uh, I did uh, a run yesterday. Uh, ENV 200 with five doors. Okay, hmm. interesting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Speaking of which, there is actually a triplet here. For some reason, there is uh, an IMEA for 170,000 NUC. Um, check it has done 3,500 kilometers. It's a fairly new car. Um, but why is it so expensive? Uh, probably because it's almost new, but okay, well, it has a fairly fresh interior, I have to say. Yeah, I think little wifey will like this. No chop, I mean, yeah. Okay, hmm? So I'm, I'm showing wifey. So I Which I I'm gonna do it Okay, yeah, she she agrees. It, it, it's it's a good looking. Uh, what? You know what? I think they actually they have done some update here because the I the old eye mirror doesn't look like this. So it's it's a refresh. It's an updated car, but still, um, the thing is that uh, let me check if there's some info about it. As far as I know, there is no update in the drivetrain, so it still has the what was it again? Eighteen point. Uh, no, I don't remember the, 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 the battery capacity. It was some 18 kilowatt hours. Um, still the same drivetrain. So would you pay like two, three times more money just to get the, the, the refreshed interior? I wouldn't do it. I would, I would buy the, the old one, you know, the, the one that go for about 50 to 80,000 uh, nook. Um, we still don't see uh, 30 kilowatt hour leaves here. What the heck? Uh, more golfs coming up, yeah. So the golf is actually a, a good deal. Like you know, I wouldn't buy a branch banking new golf. Uh, I mean, it depends on the money, but uh, I would I would buy a secondhand golf because it seems like a secondhand golf they have they have dropped in price, maybe more than other cars, uh, like the Leafs. If you look at the percentage drop, Kia Soul, okay. Um, so uh, all right, let's just skip this. Skip, 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 skip. Okay. Um, wow. Uh, maybe I should have live streamed this instead. This is a very long video. It's way long, way longer than I first thought. But uh, I think we have to start applying some. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. There's this one. Uh, let's check this one. Okay. So the Mercedes Benz B Class Electric is. Um, how do I? How do I put this? In a nice way so that I don't offend anyone. The Mercedes-Benz B-Class Electric is um, it's a, what I should I should call a compliance car. It's um, it's a poor excuse for an EV. It is a nice looking interior. It says the Mercedes, you know, you can say that it has the Mercedes DNA. Yes, okay, fair enough. Nice interior, um, leather, lots of leather stuff in here. Um, the problem with the Mercedes is that it has it has the drivetrain from a Tesla, so it uses Tesla battery, Tesla motor in Tesla inverter, and also the Tesla charger. But the main problem is not that it uses Tesla components. I think Daimler and Tesla, they had some uh, cooperation there. The problem is that this car is highly inefficient. We don't know why, like it, it consumes like 250 to 300 watt per kilometer. You know, it's just, it has, it consumes even more than eye paste. It's so thirsty for some reason. It's highly inefficient. And this car, believe it or not, has a 36 kilowatt hour battery pack. 36 kilowatt hour. When we scroll through the list here, most of these, these other cars, they have 24 or the i3 has 22, you know? Uh, so th th this car has way bigger battery than the other cars, but these other cars, they have usually more range than this. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's highly inefficient. And that is not the, the only problem. The Mercedes-Benz B-Class does not support fast charging. Um, you can only charge it from, 
from AC, you know, slow-ish charging, but it has an 11 kilowatt onboard charger. So you can, uh, I wouldn't even call it semi-faster, but 11 kilowatt after charging loss is, is 9.5 kilowatt. So it's like, it takes, um, the, does it say the charging time here? But now I can do a quick battery. It will take about uh, four hours to charge it up on 400 volt. So um, it has very limited use, but I guess it has somewhat okay trunk space because it's, it's a fairly big car compared to some of the competitors, uh, which these pictures don't show that well, but yeah. So uh, I think the Mercedes they discontinued this this model, so they're not manufacturing it anymore. Probably for a good reason because there are not too many of these. Like it's um, yeah. Um, so let's see. I'm trying to wrap up now. It just became very long. Uh, I'm trying to see. Okay, let's just start applying filters. So. Um, Let's check here, uh, Chevrolet, because now if you look at the different brands, okay, Citroën, Fiat, yeah, the Fiat, oh, damn, so many Fiats, 200, but look, compared to BMW, 600 BMWs for sale, uh, Ford, very few of those, okay, we have the Ford Focus and the Ford uh, Van, uh, Hyundai, oh yes, we should check out the Hyundais, look here, 320 uh, Hyundai, these are either Ionics or, um, uh, Kona's. So you can get a uh, second-hand uh, Ionic. Say the cheapest one is 245,000. Nice looking car. Now when we go in this price range, 250,000, those are good, damn good EVs. Like active cooling, superb efficiency, lots of space, lots of comfort, adaptive cruise control, LCAS, like way better cars than some of the other cars at 150,000 look so you get way better car for the money yeah you guys have seen it before uh, ionic um so let's see um let me check here um if i try to look yeah, yeah kona okay konas um i should tell a little bit about the kona so this one is seems to be a stripped down kona because it doesn't have the head-up display and it cost 389,000. So I would say that these Konas are overpriced because if you order them, you will, it will cost you about 330,000 look. And so people are trying to sell Konas for, um, for profit, about 60,000 look profit. So my recommendation is don't buy these cars. It's, it's not worth that extra cost. Um, just get, Order your own Kona and wait a while. Uh, the Hyundai, they have been ramping up the production, so I think it's worth worth waiting for it. And this is, uh, what the heck, uh, Fos uh, hydrogen. It's funny that the hydrogen cars appears on the list, even though I checked only to show electric cars. Uh, there is no, uh, there's no category for hydrogen cars here. But yeah, uh, so if you can afford, um, if you, can, if you have 250,000 look, then I would highly recommend uh, Ionic. It's one of the best EVs in this price range. Now, the only downside is that the Ionic does not have app support and there's no way to get it uh, in the aftermarket. So you have to live with that disadvantage. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, but overall, it's a very good car, uh, a very good EV. So let's just quickly look at Jaguar. Okay, that's uh, the I-Pace. Those are kind of expensive. Maybe I should cover it in the, in another video instead. Kia, it's just Kia Soul, like we have seen before, right? Mercedes Benz, uh, Mitsubishi, the triplets, uh, Nissan, Opel, Ampere E. Yeah, so the cheapest Ampere E is for three hundred fifty thousand nook roughly. Um, now the Ampere E is in a different like, league when it comes to range and power and all that. So it kind of competes with Kona, but it's cheaper than the Kona, you see. Uh, so overall, I think the Ampere E is a, is a fairly good car. Uh, you can have roof rack. Let me see. I think I saw a picture. Yeah, here, here. Look, look. Just, just like an example. You know, you can have uh, stuff there on the roof, canoe or whatever. So it's a very versatile car. Um, I heard that it's somewhat inefficient in winter. It has PTC heater. Uh, most other cars we have seen today uh, have um, uh, a heat pump, which is mostly efficient around zero degrees Celsius or higher. But uh, this one doesn't have it, so people have been reported uh, getting 250 watt hour per kilometer consumption in winter. So 
uh, in winter you might have to expect only um, 250 kilometers where summer 350 400 kilometers range all right let's see uh so that was for 350 000 nook renault yeah we have this one okay we have been there before smart tasari toyota tesla i will cover tesla in a separate video because that this yeah this video is getting too long already toyota yeah this is a bit weird uh we have the rav the it's like um a piece of ev history here so the rav electric um I don't know too much about it. Maybe I should test it out one day. But two hundred thousand for Rav Electric. Um, it's on sixty-six thousand uh, kilometers only. So it's um, it's you. I guess if you buy this car, you buy a piece of history. Uh, so I should also try to cover that in a in a separate video. Uh, I should show you this one, which is uh, a little bit uh, weird because it's a it's a hydrogen car. It's a Toyota Mirai that shows up here. And the, the a new Mirai cost um, 500,000, uh, okay, I'm almost done by the way, uh, it cost 500,000 nook. So this car has lost a lot in, it has depreci depreciated almost 100,000 nook per year since it came out here. So it's, uh, well, it's a hydrogen car. So I think we just have to end that there. Yeah, uh, let me check here. So almost done. Um, Volkswagen. Yeah, okay. Um, other cars. Yeah, those are the, the weird looking cars. But all right. So I think that will be it. It was a very long video. Uh, yeah, I hope this was interesting for you. So um, as I mentioned, I will make another video about Tesla, a separate video about Tesla secondhand cars. So yes, uh, let me think what you th uh, let me let me know what you think about this video. Was it useful for you or not? So um, I hope you guys enjoy this. And as always, thank you for watching, and talk to you later.